please welcome Cindy Berry Hill. Some fancy 
Yeah. 
let go of the mind. Mom was just a photograph. I found her in the attic, picture torn in half, and in the murky past of my memory. She said, they joined our family tree, and I know.
Okay, we're gonna do one more, three of us together. Um, and uh, this is a song that uh, uh, me and this guy Stu wrote together. And uh, uh, Stu's in a really cool band called The Negro Problem. You've probably heard about them. So uh, we wrote this song about a friend of his name, Eileen. And then a couple of weeks ago, we did a show uh, at Highland Grounds, and it turned out that this woman, Eileen, was there, and I never met her, and she didn't know that we'd written a song about her, and she said halfway through the song, she realized that this was a song about her. So. <laughs>
I always thought that it'd be really cool to like, get to a point where I just decide that I'm not going to tour anymore. And then um, I'll just send out like other Cindy Lees, you know, out on the road, you know, but they have to have blonde hair. <laughs> I mean, they do that with play, so why not with, you know? Okay, how many people have been to Victorville? You know where Victorville is? Okay, well, this is a song. Uh, inspired by Victorville. It's called Victorville Beach. <laughs> and there might not be a beach there now, but you know, maybe in 2035 there could be. So this is sort of a science fiction song.
are small, you've got to be adaptable. There's almost no land left around here at all, even for the few that are left. I know all beautiful things have got their season, the cactus, flowers, the bloom, and tonight so I brought something along. I wasn't sure which but then it turned out you know this is the only one I brought so this is the one I'll read. All I can say is thank the Lord for Sunnycock Farm. The only place in this disheveled city where I can belong. I ran into Maria yesterday. She was playing the part of the untouchable diva. But she told me something I think now I needed to know. There, while standing beneath the city lamplight, Maria said, there's something new happening at Sunnycock Farm. Maybe I'll see you there, Cindy. And by the way, there's a blonde singer around that's imitating your style of songwriting and performing. She's new on the scene. Fuck. That's just what I hate hearing. And I hear it all too often. This or that blonde slim girl is stealing your style. And of course they never are, but it works me up into a state of panic. And I think, oh great, someone that looks and acts just like me is getting that great big money deal. I knew my monster genius trapped in the dark dungeon of the brain always deserved. And I play it over and over indulgently in my head till I see the new Cindy Lee and find out she's a someone else. And then I'm so relieved. But until that time, I'm convinced that there's an alternate universe that's fucking with me, that's intersecting ours. And the other Cindy Lee has broken loose and busted out into my fucking territory. And that's just what happened. When I finally got my butt on my bicycle and pedaled across town to Sunny Cock Farm, which is across the tracks, over the river, behind the mall, and in the low rent, cool art people buying new bad drugs part of town. <laughs> when you first step through the door, you may mistake it for a fresh veggie nature nook. A few unhewn wood tables, a dessert case, chalkboard with the specials. The back room has a little theater. Sometimes new songwriters play in the front room near the dessert case. The new blonde slim songwriter girl was there. She was playing a weird old 70s keyboard along with a little kid's record that spun around on a play school phonograph player. It was sounding good. God, it really was sounding good. This could have been me. She had those off-the-wall sensibilities, that sort of avant, but sort of pop. I got scared. My face burned red hot. What the fuck was going on? She was playing my music my way. Somehow I figured it out. It was a geometry thing. She was me, but I was behind my own times, and that Cindy Lee was about six months ahead. I had a lot of catching up to do. 
And here at the sunny cock with its wooden sign swinging above the door, the logo a hooting rooster with the morning sun horizon, I was on the verge of joining myself at last. How long had I been gone? A man ran out from the back theater room, sashayed between the redwood tables. He had on a big white t-shirt and nothing else. His genitals exposed to us diners. He smiled and pranced about announcing to the room, I am a representative of the moon. And I believed him. Then a group of five or six men trotted out after him with blue, yellow, and red shirts. I assume they all represented spectrum of stars. The blue star stopped and said to me, Cindy, heaven only holds 144,000 people, so you might as well enjoy yourself now. He scratched his two-day-old beard and talked some more. I figure in the five or six thousand years that human beings have civilized this earth, there must have been at least 144,000 Gandhi and Mother Teresa's, so it's too late for us, girl. You might as well have heaven now. And so, that explained his becoming a stellar being, you see. The stars and moon ran out the front door and in through the back door, round and round a good number of times. In fact, the more they cycled, the closer I got to feeling like the Cindy Lee on stage and myself were joining as one. God knows how long they went around like that, those swinging moon and stars, but I and my twin were soon wed as one, waking up together to the great buzz of an alarm. It was morning and time to drive to the next gig. <laughs> Actually, I woke up just in time to drive to the bookstore. It's a gig. It's a kind of a gig. It's a gig. And so this is a song about that that particular gig. The song called Surfing Bookstore. I have to burp first. <laughs> it was a mellow one. So. I'm a bookstore girl. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. I'm a bookstore girl. Guys are calling me from all over the world. Looking for something rare, something you can't get just in. Surfboard. 
this is a song called Follow the Sun. And um, I wrote it uh, one time after getting back from the dentist and my mouth was uh, had Novocaine in it. Been, it had been Novocaine and it inspired this song. Because I think that you can use drugs, you know, to write with. Novocaine is a really good one. You don't even have to administer it yourself or anything. And the serendipity of somebody else doing it that makes it an even better song. Yeah. Let's see how this start. How's it start? Climbing red raspberry tour. Shaped disc, and on the other side there was a kind of a control panel, and 
that sadness and ecstasy can be so intertwined. I feel lonely, sad, quiet, numb, breathing, dumb, nothing, space, something, a largeness is revealed, a relationship with a void. I'm, I'm all blissed out. How did this happen? And from a field of mustard flowers, step upon my sacred slab, and the sun backlit your hair, and the brand new world has fragile air. Take a go, we're all strangers in a strange new land. Brought here by the dreamer's hand. You're from a clan unknown to us, but I appreciate your friendly face. You've got the kind of look alike, but I don't trust it. Look at that grin. I think I'm losing and I'm pretending to win. She won't even try, 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 she won't even
She won't even try. She won't even try. She won't even try. She won't even.